For all of you who listen to Submersion and own an Android device, go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android device. I personally use the app and I love it. I can search for the podcast I want to listen to, select it as a favorite, and have it just a click away. Make sure to select Submersion as a favorite so you don't miss any of our new episodes. Again, the app is the Podcast Republic app, available on Android devices. As you'll soon see as we get into the podcast, we completely forget to mention that it is WTF Movie Month as we kick it off with The Rift. And some people may consider us idiots for calling Jack Scalia Jack Scalia, but you knew what you were in for. Episode 66. Woo! Wait a minute. I don't trust you, Zach. <laughs> Office, Zach is, he's Office saying that quotes. he might have watched a different movie. I think he's lying. Yeah, I don't believe him. He's I've pretty, never pretty lied pretty. in my life. Okay. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then we'll take you at your own word. Yeah, Thanks, that was, Kyle. That was believable. Yeah. So What's been going up? on? Dude, what hasn't been going on? I haven't slept... In the month. <laughs> oh my God. New Daddy Kyle. Kyle, just yeah. to catch this uh before we get too deep into it, your mic's coming in a little quiet and it looks like it's a little quiet on our uh little audio graph as well compared to everyone else. So. And I'm digging the audio graph because it's almost like like I can see it growing and it's like I'm playing with sand and I love it. Oh, that's good. That's that's you just can uh, if you if you time it right, you can make like a dick with your audio graph. Like, Whoa. it looks just like a dick right there. Like that? Wow, this uh, is something really special, guys. It's a great <laughs> great episode. Best one we've done. <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I will say neither Zach's nor I did a very good one, but you can do it. We'll practice and we'll do it after the show. What was that? <laughs> You'll find out later. Sounded like uh, Law and Order. Dive, 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 dive. That might be a record. What began as an innocent conversation among friends would soon spiral out of control and later be referred to by future generations as the eighth wonder of the modern world. Mac East Second Floor Studios takes you on the journey of your lifetime as your captains, Alex the Mustard Man, the artist formerly known as Brom, Jamie the Brain, Kyle El Capitan, and Zach the Backbone present Submersion. And Brom, you might be right, man. That could have been a record. Okay, I absolutely loved listening to that while we're recording. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's super great. It's like we just stepped into 2019. This is fantastic. <laughs> this is Zencaster.com. <laughs> Shout out. That's This is an un, unpaid sponsorship. Dude, great job, Zencaster.com. That is awesome what's going on right now. I mean, it's pretty it cool. Is. It is. <laughs> nice. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, we got that back. Well, I'm just, I'm just testing <laughs> all my to- – I'm playing with all my toys right now because this is crazy. I love it. Oh well, yeah. You don't oh, yeah. technically have those toys. You're still doing that on your phone. Unlike Kyle, who's hogging all of the administrator privileges over there with the soundboard built into Zencaster. Right. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, as you keep talking like this, they better start throwing some money our way. I, they may they may not want to be a sponsor. We should probably have them. <laughs> yeah. Even I mean, we were making I, audio graphics like a minute ago. Right. Yeah. They're like, please quit saying our name over yeah. and over again. <laughs> Zaccaster. Oh, there you go. Get your own. <laughs> it's been a while, guys. I'm sorry. It's been kind of crazy uh, for our listeners out there. I had my last month of school, so it was just, uh, you, know, you, you know, end of the school year, right? Paperwork, yeah. meetings, students, crying. It's all that fun stuff. Were you were crying. The crying? Yeah. I was crying, and I made a student cry, so there you go. That's cool. How'd you do but that? that, kick her, that kick that's in the shins? A, that's a story for a non-podcast. So mm. <laughs> that's uh, that's for the special features behind the scenes of. Submerging. That's for our pa- Patreon only subscribers, right there. Oh, okay. you know, yeah. That's what that is. <laughs> Zach and, after and dark. Potential employers. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. 
Can't wait to hear that. Throw me a little change. I'll give them the inside scoop. (laughs) Exactly. Oh, my word. So, Zach, it has been (laughs) a while. Yes. What did we watch? So we watched the classic film, Operation, just kidding, uh, 1990 The Rift. <laughs> oh, also you a classic film. Screwing with us, huh? I got you. There it is. Oh, uh, there it is. Good. Wow. I really just, didn't, I didn't miss that one so much. You just got zacked. <laughs> <laughs> Zack dogged. That wasn't even a soundboard. What are you guys talking good. about? <laughs> nah. Yes, yeah, so we did watch the 1990 movie The Rift, starring the one and only, the sexy Jack Scalia. One Very and only. sexy. Ray Wise and the always incredible R. Lee Ermey. Okay, I didn't know he was in this until he showed up, and I was just like, hot damn, this is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny yeah. they had such, like, I mean, he's not super prominent, especially at this point, but he's like a known face from Full Metal Jacket and stuff like that. And then oh, Ray Wise is, is also kind of like a guy you see around in different things. So surprise. It's because mm-hmm. it's, I mean, spoiler alert, but it's a low budget film. Zach, did you watch this at one times? No, I, I, I watched this completely at one times because Amazon yeah. doesn't allow you to speed it up. But <laughs> it was, I, I enjoyed it today. I'm excited for this because yeah. I, I, I didn't pay attention to that god awful text chat we have that just keeps going. I ignore it most of the time, <laughs> which is probably why I didn't realize we were on Zencaster until now. But right. um, I, had to, I did go back though because when I looked at the Google Drive, I'm like, now wait a minute. I already watched Operation Pacific and I, and I think I missed the episode. So I'm glad that I found the rift chat that was going on with all the great quotes we have. So, well, at the end, you can give your official Operation Pacific review because nobody should have to watch that and stay well, silent. Y- yeah, I'll, <laughs> listeners, stick around because you can't wait to hear Zach's rating for that film. <laughs> Zach goes on a rant for 45 <laughs> minutes. Operation Pacific. Be a Patreon subscriber and you can listen to Zach after dark. <laughs> it's just Zach talking about some weird crackpot theories, making kids cry at work. Like, what is this? <laughs> like, well, it's the best part of submersion, obviously. I and- picture the cover art being me like at a desk with just a lamp on and I'm just turning the lamp off. And it's just Zach after dark. <laughs> that'd be good. Well, that'd that would be, be real sweet. Good. The waters just show up. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And it's only... To get all that content, it's only ninety nine ninety nine a week. So sign Whoa. up. <laughs> I call that a deal. <laughs> people would. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Might need that uh, siren again. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> do, do it a second time. Yeah. Yeah. Do, <laughs> do the whole intro again. All right. Now we're back. Now we're back in. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can I cut in real quick? Yeah. Go ahead and you uh, why don't you cut in. I'm going to cut in because I'm still getting used to our wonderful uh, Zencaster. I guess. Is it the host or is it just a software, Kyle? What, it, what is I think it? It's just I think a software. software. Is it just a software, not a host. Great software. So I see the microphone. Obviously, I'd click that to mute myself, right? Yes. What about the hand? Well, what is, that, is this high-fiving each other? No, that's no, like you want to say, cut in. Yeah. You, working in a school, you should know this. Like, oh, I've got my hand raised. Ki- yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yes, Kyle and Zach. Uh, Kyle first. What do you have for us, Kyle? Um, I have a. I'm, I'd actually like to defer to Zach. Yeah, I saw he had his hand raised second, and I want to be the okay. take the higher ground. Actually, all right, Zach. Can I go to the bathroom? Can I go to the bathroom? I, no, I really, no. really need to go to the. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like okay, already went. We definitely need the siren. <laughs> ah, speaking of sirens, oh, that's a good transition, right? <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So, The Rift, 1990. Now, before we start, I just want to ask everyone, if you had to guess before you knew it was set in 1990 or it made in 1990, when would you have guessed this movie was made? 84. Yeah. I didn't think it was that that bad for, for 90. It looked um, like kind of a cheap version of The Thing, and The Thing was around then, right? Yeah, thing would have been in the late, 80s sometime. Late seven. Oh, okay. Late seventies. Is that right? I, I thought. Let me look. That's it up what, I would have guessed. I would have guessed late seventies because it, it felt to me like it had a little really? bit of a jazz vibe. Eighty-two. 
It was a thing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. I would have said probably so, yeah, mid 80s, early 80s. All right. I just want to say, point that out because it was 1990. So like three years later, Jurassic Park was coming out, and like people were like, "Those are real dinosaurs on the on the movie screen," <laughs> and then this like came out just a few years before that. And good thing Maybe. it came out before that. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, then uh, well, I have some trivia well, about Abyss, what this director released later. The Abyss had already come out. Yes, the Abyss had come out. This kind of rode the wave of the Abyss. Oh, look at you! With your Such talent. a blockbuster hit. So. All right, shall we get into it? Let's do it. The timer is rolling. All right, so we open, and there's a couple of G-men, government men, for those not in the know, busting into an apartment, and they find a guy, he's totally shirtless, ripped, muscles glistening, uh, drunk, passed out on his like hotel bed. Were, were and they're they like, glistening? wake up. Or was he greasy? Uh, well, both. So it's, you know, it's not Good. mutually exclusive. Good. And so anyways, this guy is our hero, Wick Hayes, and he's a submarine designer who basically rejected the, you know, working with the army on his, or Navy uh, on his submarine because they were like totally fucking up his design. And they come in and they're like, yo, Wick, we need you because your submarine and your design totally blew up and it's all messed up now. And he's like, no, it's not my design. It's it's what you did to it, right? But they also drop a yes. bomb, and they're like, hey, oh, by the way, uh, it's because it's that nuclear reactor that you wanted in it. He's like, what are you talking about? I never designed one with a nuclear reactor. And they are like, yeah, you did. You totally did, man. <laughs> He's like, uh, uh, shit, you're right. Yeah. So they, they basically screwed up a design, but... They tell him, like, we need you to go down and um, figure out what went wrong, I guess. It's, they're kind of going down. They know the, the Siren 1 is totally destroyed, but they're sending down Siren 2, the second of his designs, to go down and pick up the black box. That's what seems to be the case, just to try to figure out what went wrong because they're convinced that he screwed up the design and they want to prove it, which seems weird to be like, you have to go down and prove that you fucked up. And he wasn't, he, well, he wasn't going to do this, but then they're like, hey, you know what? You remember your buddy, David, or what? I don't know what the hell his name was. He's on the Siren One, and you got to go down there and mm -hmm. save him. He's like, damn it. I. Yeah, which is weird because that never actually pl comes into play. No, 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 well, it can't come into play, as we'll find out later. Right, because David, I mean, you would have, you would have thought actually that would have been a good ploy in the end that david was the final oh, monster that would have been good I, that would have been yeah. pretty good here's our final right, boss well, it's to kill his friend yeah it's to kill his friend final boss literally because this basically turns into a video game yeah, later but uh john wick Hayes. <laughs> i was parabellum good. i had just watched john wick and then when they said wick i was like wait is that his last name please 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 spoiler it's not no. So anyways, he gets onto the submarine and we start, we get to meet the crew and holy shit, it's been a while since I had a bunch of misfit submariners on my hands that I liked more than this group of guys and gals. Oh yeah. So immediately we get yeah. uh, our the comedic relief, Skeets, Skeet. talking to Anna and Anna spots Wick on a television on some kind of camera outside the submarine and a little conversation ensues. Oh, who's this? Unless I miss my guess, that's Wick Hayes, the weirdest kid who invented this undersea playpen. Not bad looking, considering. Ah, Roger owes me 20. I bet him you had hormones <laughs> lurking somewhere in that luscious bod. Skates, if you ever grow up, let me be the first to know. Oh, Skeets. <laughs> this guy, like, like, he is yeah. just doing so stuff bad. like that the whole movie. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. A little workplace uh, harassment for us, but that's He was literally comedic relief. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. Yeah. Oh, God. I loved him so much. Oh, boy. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so then we, we transition over. Uh, Wick comes onto the boat. Meets up with what was her name R R Rivera or something. Well, anyway, and we she find out it's his ex-wife. Well, who who is the ex-wife? The scientist, Nina, or whatever the hell her name is. Yeah, but the, the, the she she doesn't meet the scientist oh, until sorry. later. I blew it. I blew it. Yeah. 
Well, anyways, the Rivera is just like the navigator or something. And she introduced him to everyone uh, on the crew. And they have, uh, what is it, Coca-Cola and like uh, Heineken's everywhere. Like it's weird product placement because I wouldn't think this movie would be able to get product placement. But there's product placement everywhere. But anyways, they want to hide all the beers before um, the captain comes along. And so they hide all the beers, and the captain comes in, and he's a real hard ass. And that's – what's his name? Arlie Ermey, the man, the myth, right. the Ermey. legend. And he comes in, and he's all like, I own this boat. You don't own shit, Wick. I don't care what you designed. And basically, they have a pr- pretty rough relationship right from the go. And he introduces, hey, we also have a biologist on board. Guess who it is? Wick's oh, ex-wife. Stun, oh. stun, stun. Yeah. So he's all like, fuck. And then she's all like, fuck. But you also know there's a little twinkle in their eyes because, oh, boy, uh, they're still. Oh, come on, other. dude. You could have you could have really you were when you kept saying fuck, you can be like, well, because they're going to fuck. But you didn't. I didn't. I felt like that would have been crude. <sighs> You're right. Kyle. We're never I'm we're more never mature crude. than that. We're never crass. Right. So there we go. Anyways, you guys want they... to make a dick out of the audiograph? <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead and do it. <laughs> I would very much like that. Yes, please. Uh, and so then they, so they head off and they start in their diving. yellow submarine, and they've got it. And yeah, literally a yellow submarine, and they've got another guy on board. Um, Robbins is that yeah, right? Yeah, and this is uh, uh, this is Wick's bunkmate. Uh, <laughs> is that yeah? That yeah, because he was a new well, guy we on board as well. He was real second. Yeah. seasick yeah uh he's real seasick but he's also he's gonna be the guy who seems to be in charge of figuring out where things are he's like the right hand man of the uh of the captain so instead of having wick in charge who like designed the submarine this guy instead is uh in charge of kind of doing all that stuff and so they start diving and almost immediately they're in trouble because it seems like the alignment's off and they go into pretty deep depth about exactly what was going on. They're like three degrees off and I'm also off. And Wick's kind of like someone fucked up my submarine. And then they hit the wall and almost get destroyed, almost get killed. And everyone's like, Jesus, like Wick, you totally boned us. And he's like angry at the captain. So the captain brings him into his cabin and it's like, yo, I don't take guff from nobody. And he even, he even banishes him from the control room in a pretty heated conversation. In the interest of crew morale, yeah. I'm placing the control room off limits to you until further notice. What about my checking the siren? Robbins is qualified. You can assist if necessary via ship's comm. Well, Captain. You just might as well have me tapping damn Morse code on a bulkhead. Hayes, you can play with your pecker for all I care. Just as long as you don't do it in my <laughs> nice. control room. Dismissed. <laughs> I, I was hoping I was hoping for more lines like that from oh, Army. Well, you would think you would get more. I mean, like we'd mentioned, Full Metal Jacket I was had already come that, out. Yeah. Just, I was yeah, expecting yeah. a scene where he would just like lose his shit and just start cussing out somebody, but it never really happened. No, that was about like as close right. as we that got. Was the closest yeah. we got, yeah. 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 So, anyways, he's banished. They are still trying to. I mean, did you did you notice how deep they were going? It was, was kind of crazy. They were they were at like thirty thousand feet or I something. They went to forty five thousand. I thought Some, something like that. And so they're diving, and he's in the he's in the now banished to the engine room. And they kind of get, they get all the way down there and they're want to find out whether they can see parts of the siren one. And so they get amongst the thing and they're like, holy shit, like there is seaweed down here and there shouldn't be anything living at all in this rift. And so they're like, oh man, we better check it out. And the biologist is like, I want a piece of that seaweed action. So definitely go out there, try to figure out whether there is any evidence of the siren and also get me some of that seaweed. Also, something important to know and is so, they are honing in on a black box signal, like the black box from an airplane. Yeah. The submarine had one in it, and that's how they're able to determine where it went down. Yeah. So they send out a very Swedish actor, uh, Sven, 
uh, who definitely was not they not kept pronouncing Swedish. it Swin. It was pissing well, dude, me off. Dude, one time they said <laughs> the guy was Spanish, and then they kept saying like with the W, and then I was confused. I was like, wait, did who would be named Swin? <laughs> A Spanish guy pretending to be Swedish. Swin, Swin Smith, oh, your next yes. kid. Oh, good. Uh, and so they kind of, it's him and a French dude who are the two uh, divers and he gets, to, he gets to be the one who goes out. And so he's all psyched. He's like, fuck you. I'm heading out. I'm getting all the glory. I'm going to pick up some of this sweet ass seaweed. And so he swims out and there's seaweed everywhere. He picks up a little bit, sends it back to the submarine. Uh, Cause he's like, this is crazy. The toxin levels are yeah, through the roof but- or whatever. And he sees like a, a, a crazy course, best special oh, yeah. effects. And then um, we even you get know, him a little, out. he gets a little freaked out during this. Yeah. Swin. Swin. What the hell's happening? Swin. I'm okay. I'll explain to you later. Swin. My man, you got a lot of white folks turning blue. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of white oh, folks turning blue. That's great. <laughs> and so, anyways, he it seems fine for a second, but then we just see like a, a small clip of an octopus, and then he gets totally also, crushed to death. He should have been crushed to death because he's at like thirty thousand feet below sea level. <laughs> Well, that's what they explain because they're like, what happened to him? And he's like, he must have got a hole in his suit. And at this depth, he would get crushed. But like, why did they even have like, I didn't understand even the, the point of the octopus. No idea. I guess it was supposed to be giant, but they, they didn't have the technology or special effects to show it. So just they showed a tentacle and then him dying. And that was it. It's symbolic, Jamie. Come on. Uh, oh, man. You guys always watch it so much closer than I do. I don't get the shit. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they're all devastated because Swen was their bestie of friends, and particularly this the French guy. And he goes up to the the um, bridge and goes up to the captain and is like, "Fuck you!" Pretty much, basically, more or less. But they don't have much time to mourn yeah. because all of a sudden on the sonar, something is rapidly approaching them, and nobody knows what it is until it wraps its weird kind of tentacles around it. It's just kind of a big blob with like an a eye. Cuttlefish. And it kind of like it, literally a cuttlefish because it wanted Aww, to cuddle up on cute. top of that submarine. It was like just cuddling. And when I hug, it was kind of like the sea monster and street sharks. It really just wanted to bone. I thought it was love, not so bone. It's not his fault. Um they're synonymous. It's one and the same, Kyle. I don't know. Uh, let me explain this to you. Okay. When a submarine and a sea monster love each other, uh there's a chance they will bone. And make a baby. Um, Zach, you are our um, sex ed sub instructor. That's true. That's that's what you teach, yeah. right? I, yeah, you know, on the side for ninety nine ninety nine oh, an hour. Also, yeah. Zach after dark sex ed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that means? Go on. Uh, it, <laughs> well, anyways, <laughs> the sea monster wraps up the submarine and is basically like, "I just want to cuddle you," and they're like. What are we going to do? We're going to get crushed. Like not only are they already at like 40,000 feet, but now they're getting crushed. They got even more pressure. And they're like, we don't know what to do. We may as well die. And they all lay on the floor and they're like, we may as well die. And then who comes in, who busts into the bridge, but Wick. And he's like, get out of my way. And also I think someone hit his head or something. So like, get out of my way. And he's like, we're going to electrocute this motherfucker straight out of 20,000 leagues. Haven't you seen 20,000 leagues in the sea? Like get out of here. And so he's like, Let's electrocute it. And they electrocuted a whole bunch and eventually it falls off. And they're like, yo, Wick, we love you. Basically. And the Basically. thing that he did to electrocute it was for some reason, the submarine has a cloaking device, which was <laughs> this is the only time it was ever discussed. And they could overload it and shock the thing, whatever it was. And I wish we would have got to see more of that cloaking device, but maybe we short circuited and that was all we got. Yeah, it doesn't seem like you'd really need a cloaking device. I wouldn't think so. Because you can go down to 30,000 feet under yeah, the ocean. get away from so pretty much what else is there. Except giant monsters. Uh, I was going to say, those giant monsters didn't seem to have any problem with that cloaking device until it was turned into an electrocutable thing or whatever. Yeah. Anyways. An EMP. So, 
Good. And so then yeah. they start to get the the black box going again. And they're like, yo, it's not even down in this rift. It's in that tiny rift over there. And they are like, that looks too harsh. We can't go through it. And uh, Skeet is like, seriously, let's just like, go up to the surface and let other people deal with this bullshit. Like we now we told them where the black box is. We found it. We know it's destroyed. Like, why do we worry about this stuff? But they keep on pushing through, particularly Robbins. And that's kind of like a little hint. And Well, also during this... Uh, when they electrocuted the monster, they did short circuit their autopilot mm. and there was a little bit of a situation where they had to, you know, really try to drive that sub and land it right on a cliff. Oh, and that's right. That's what in Wick and Wick. That, that was the thing that Wick did that everyone was like super in love with him about. But not the cat. Well, the captain was like, hey, good job. But don't you ever contradict an order in front of the crew again yeah but he lets him back and, up on the uh, bridge by the way yeah you're back in you're back in the control room right what's up bro i got you they fist bump they hug they touch tongues yes just the tips though just the tip of the tongues and so then won't confirm or deny that and then they they see where this thing is this black box and they have to like manually pilot their way through and they're like a wick in particular is like this is like super dangerous. Look at all these like really hot geysers all over the entrance of this um this like tiny rift area. Yeah. And they're like, whatever, we'll time it. Like we'll set it up, don't worry about it. So they start going through and they have all they're throwing all kinds of quotes. They even throw out a quote from um Full Metal Jacket. The suck a golf ball through a garden hose or whatever. Right here, yeah, right here. They uh, they're experiencing some turbulence. Turbulence coming in waves. I'm quicker now. This feels like a golf ball being sucked through a garden hose. God, <laughs> that's all it is. That's straight from a uh, Full Metal Jacket. I did not know that. Yeah, he, uh, L or Ermy, uh, what's his name? I can't. I don't. I never. Arlie remember. Ermy. Arlie Ermy. Uh, not says, Ernie. Ermy with an M <laughs> uh, says, uh, you suck dicks. And then it's like, no. And it's like, bullshit. I bet you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. Oh. One of his lines. Did you say that the pile? Yes, I believe so. All right. Yeah. So anyways, just like a golf ball going through a garden hose, they make their way all the way through and they actually surface. And I was like super surprised when they did this. And then no one even seemed to express shock. They were just like, Oh yeah, I guess we we're in this cavern. I'm like a cavern forty thousand feet under the ocean. That's fucking nuts. The pressure in there must be crazy. It's also like super toxic apparently, because they s- decide to send out a group of people to a landing party. A landing basically. party. They're giving them guns, and I, I would have if I was in that landing party, I'd be like, uh, "Why do we need guns? I'm confused. <laughs> like, what are we expecting? I'm in an underwater cavern. Uh, I presume I." Are you presuming there are things here? This is crazy. Like, come on. And and if there's anything there, you're going to hope it's it should be the survivors. And they're probably not going to be looking to kill you. Yeah. They'll be like, hey, thanks, man. Thanks for helping me out. It's like two sides. No. It's either the survivors, you don't want to shoot them, or bacteria or something. That isn't a problem for bullets. But no, they're like, we've got these special guns. They can fire underwater, which comes in, doesn't come into play. And I was like, that's nuts. Like, why would you? You have them with like future space guns super weird so anyways they go off and they're like come on robins tell us where to go and so this is like really crazy stuff where they're just like being told where to go and it lasts a really long time but eventually one of the groups is kind of like what is that because there's like they keep on seeing something in the walls and then a monster pops out looks like kind of like a was like a big worm or something kind of it looked like a dragonfly and a worm kind of yeah like a dragonfly face Pretty giant, yes. giant dragonfly face. And it comes out and it, alien style, snaps on uh, one of the guy's faces and he's like super injured. And when they try to drag him back, he starts to have like, clearly the thing is like multiplying within him. So they blast his head open and it's like, he's dead. So don't worry about it. Smoked him. Yes. And then there are... Uh, they all decide to like scramble back. So they're shooting all these uh, critters all over the place. They eventually find a small, uh, like a little office almost, like a laboratory, which is 
nuts. But like this little laboratory where there's a skeleton in there. It's real spooky scare at skeletons, like a like a horror film at this point where you're like, ooh, I'm spooked by that skeleton. And then they have like dr- drives there, like little disk drives. And they grab those as well to try to figure out what the hell is going on because it's pretty crazy. And as they head back, uh, another guy dies. The the French diver dies and they lose Rivera. She's kind of like lost in the caverns. But the three of the other landing party uh, make it back. And as they're getting back to the submarine, one of them gets pulled into the water by a big like fish monster. So you're kind of getting like different flavors of different monsters. Mm -hmm. Some of them look like a mixture of fish and a monster. Another one looks like a dragonfly and a monster. Another one looks like a monster and a monster. That kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, dude. And they're pretty, when they bite onto somebody too, they like turn them green. Yeah. They're basically done. You're done though if they touch you basically. Yeah. You don't want to be bit. So anyways, they get back on board and there's also not it's not something kind of crazy going on on board too i'm not sure totally planned because the biologist when she brought on that uh seaweed didn't realize oh yeah the seaweed is like totally dangerous because it's not only super poisonous but it grows super fast and gets into the water and totally owns the engine guy like the guy gets touched by the littlest bit by the seaweed and he's like just like a plant monster well, didn't it wasn't it, wasn't he the one that uh, drank some of the water? The no, ship? that was the that was the cook. The cook drank some water. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, because they had all this filtered water, and he's like, "Well, I was just drinking the stuff out of the lagoon or whatever." <laughs> You're like, "What? Why the <laughs> fuck were you doing that?" And, and then he just like slowly walks him into that room by himself yeah. and shuts the door. <laughs> cool, cool indeed, here, buddy. <laughs> Well, it was kind of crazy because that guy turns into a plant monster and then they turn to him and he's like, I'm not feeling so hot. And like, Wait, did you also drink some water? And he's like, oh, shit. Uh, like, and what so are then these they, people doing? Yeah, they quarantine like a whole bunch of the submarine off and they get back on board and they're like, all right, just stay out of the quarantine areas. And uh, Wick is like, wait, what? The quarantine areas? What? What are you talking about? And they're like, oh, yeah. Like slaying these demons and you guys are talking about quarantines and that guy's turning green. What the fuck is going on on this boat? (laughs) Exactly. You actually probably acted better than anyone in this movie right there. Good. Good. And so they get up there and they want to figure out what's on the uh, discs. And they so they play like the littlest bit they can get. And it's a guy who's kind of like DNA and it transetic and it DNA. And they're like, oh, shit. Because Wick actually knows the guy, he's like, "Oh, that was like my friend." <laughs> what? Was the guy David? who lived in the guy who lived in this cavern was like your friend? No, it was like a like a work a coworker or something. He's like, "Oh yeah, I knew that guy," and he's like, "Oh yeah, he worked in like tr- transgenic cross species hybridization bullshit." And they're like, "That's a real thing." And like DNA accelerator, like they they accelerate mutations to make it so they make monsters. And you're like, "Wow, this guy knows a lot about this like DNA monster maker." All right. Uh, and they're like, we bet we got to stop it. Like, I can't believe like this is happening. We better go out there and we better like get Rivera and destroy whatever they have, close the cavern off and get the hell out of here. So they assemble another landing party. Bad idea. Wick is also, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Skeet, Skeet is also like, uh, I prefer not to go out there and die. And they're like, no, you have to go. He's like, God damn it. They take everybody except for Robbins. So Robbins is right. the eye in the sky and even uh, our captain, Arlie Ermey, has to go out and fight the mutants. So they go out. They start going through a little bit. Uh, you can clearly see Robbins is starting to like hatch his plot. He's, all of this is like according to his plan, uh, with the idea being that they kind of set everyone up, kill everyone. He gets out and explains away all this ter- the terrible secrets uh, that were hidden in this rift. Mm-hmm. Um, but as they're walking through, they hear Rivera and she's like, oh man, I'm by this, like, I'm by like a closet, like a, where there's like a bunch of shit in here. And like, she goes in there and there's like a monster in there. She's like, oh shit, there's a monster. And she blows up a, a bomb kind of. Yeah. And it's like, I'm going to crawl in this crevice back here. Like you can find me back here. And so she climbs in there and there's like a big old cavern, a big machine where you're like, oh, that's the DNA accelerator. They explained it to me earlier. So I know. And then uh, she gets near it and gets pulled into it. Uh, we're fine. Gets are pulled we? into it. Are we? And immediately I'm like, she is make 100, it official. 100% becoming a monster. Right? Everyone knew that. Everyone was like, for sure, monster. Yeah. She has yeah. to be the monster. 
Right. She's the final boss, kind of. And so anyways, they all get back there. They're like, oh, where where should we go? They keep on killing, killing monsters, all that stuff. They find the crevice. They're like, whoa, this cavern's crazy. And they get in there and they see embryos and they're all gross. Uh, they kind of look like uh, uh, little aliens, kind of. Little, well, they kind of look, well, they they're say. They're humanoid. Well, clearly, clearly these are evolved for surface dwelling. <laughs> right. Those uh, would be ever, the words I would choose if I saw that. that. Have any of you ever seen the movie Mac and Me? No. I've just seen like Is that the little, the little alien that they like throw yeah. off a cliff or something like yes. that? Yes. Well, that's no. The wheelchair movie? That's yeah, the wheelchair where movie. Paul yeah. Rudd always oh, goes on oh. Conan. Yeah. yeah. I've like seen so those, those guys, those little embryos look just like the Mac and Me. Yeah, alien. that's true. It did. Yep. And so, anyways, they get up to the machine and she's in there. Rivera's in there and she's like, kill me. Uh, basically <laughs> like destroy it, kill me. And then they look up in the sky, kind of like at the top of the cavern. And there's this giant monster, like it look, almost looks like a sun. It's like a sun combined with a monster. And it's like, you're like, Oh shit. It, and it's like and, basically the Scylla from the Greek myths. I think that's right. I think it's probably just like a Scylla and, uh, Skeet's like, uh, I'm not going out like this motherfuckers and start shooting at the thing. <laughs> and it gets like a big old like snake, thing come down and eats them straight up <laughs> skeets is gone skeets gone yeah. and then it someone else it starts to come out again and wick is like not so fast and like blows it out of the sky and then they sit, rig everything up to explode and uh to destroy the machine and they destroy it so everyone's like pretty psyched robbins at this point is like everyone's dead don't have to worry about it obviously no one is so badass and has like such perfect abs that they could possibly survive that. And he's like, okay, I got to just set it up. So he sets up to go on a little escape pod and he's going to blow up the submarine and like escape. But because of how Wick designed the submarine, he can't, he like, they've got to like, he's got to close hatches, all this stuff. All of a sudden they're coming back with his like perfect abs and shit. They get back on board, stop the launch of the pod. But there is Robbins with a gun. He's like, get a gun, like get in this, like, Side room, you're going to sit with this plant monster until this plant monster turns you into plant monsters. Assholes. And they're like, God damn it. So he locks that. He's like, good. And they're just going to be plant monsters. And he sets off to go on his escape pod. But Wick's not going to be taken in by that. No, he comes on a screen and he's like, hey, Robbins, uh, by the way, look what I have in my hand right here. It's a computer chip. And this probably only costs 39 cents. But the ship cannot run without it, and I will destroy it, and you can't get away. You'll be trapped down here forever, and it's the only one we've got. But then he says, weird how this 50-cent piece could stop a whole machine. I was like, you just said it was 39 cents. Yeah, in come on. Same, Consistency, man. In the same thing. What's going on here? So anyways, Robbins comes down. He's got a gun. And he's like, I got a gun. And he's like, okay, you guys. Don't try any funny business. And he goes in. You could, you, he's looking through. You see all three people. You're like, one, two, three. I count all three. Nothing tricky can be happening here because I see all three. One, two, three. And then he opens the door. Uh-oh, one was a dummy, but they were just pretending to be the person because there he comes. The captain beats the shit out of this guy, <laughs> and then they sub, totally subdue him, and they're like, ha-ha, gotcha. And then the, his, the ex-wife is like, oh, my God, the chip. We, we destroyed it in the struggle. And- Wick is like, oh, that's just bullshit. Don't worry about it. It's just a piece of metal. But also important during this, Captain is such a badass when he's in like he's he's got Robins in oh, this yeah, stranglehold right. on the ground and he takes his face and he touches it to one of the mutant people to begin like the mutantizing or mutantizing process on Robins. But this does not mm -hmm. end well for our captain. No, because that because I even thought when he was doing it, I was like, you don't touch him. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So anyways, they go up to the bridge. They're like, okay, shoot, we better set this to blow and then we'll, we'll go on the escape pod. And they set it to blow and it's like 120 seconds until it explodes. Which is yeah, you probably not a Turn lot. that up a little bit. Just yeah. like turn it up because who like who's really counting at this point? Like, yeah. The guy, you just like float away. If it's what, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's still going to explode. So then like, don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah. Like yeah, you probably could There was like get... four or five minutes of screen time too before it ended up blowing. Easily. You could yeah, not easily. get that room to flood that the escape pod was in no. within two minutes. There's no way. 
even by the time they started flooding it, I think they only had like 40 seconds left. Anyways, they get down there. They're like, okay, all of us, all three of us, we're going to get in this escape pod, have a threesome, obviously. Uh, what happens down here, no one needs to know about, right? And they all shake hands on it, like, okay, good. And then the captain pushes them into the pod and is like, no, you guys have sex in this pod. I can't. And they're like, what? No, but we really wanted that threesome. But then he holds up his arm and what's on the arm? A green that respirating mushroom. plant zombie virus shit. He's turning into a plant monster. So sad. So he heads back up to the bridge. He's like, you guys have to go have, have fun in there. And then, uh, he gets up to the bridge, kind of like does a little salute, pulls out his captain dick. It's gross. Let's just be real about it. It's like just a, and at this point, his dick is just a plant monster. It's actually the it's most advanced basically portion the Scylla of from the Greek myth. Right. I think it's just like a Scylla from the Greek myth. <laughs> obviously, it's the most apt comparison <laughs> that I can think of. Uh, and so they flood, they shoot away, submarine explodes, closing the cavern, and thus uh, saving humanity from the garbage monsters that they had created on there <laughs> and completing completing Robin's Robbins's plan the entire time. Kind of, although with Wick surviving, I don't think because the plan the entire time was that he was going to destroy the submarine and get out, but then blame the, exp- the, the submarine's disaster and, and everyone being lost to Wick's flaw in the design. And in that way, they would kind of cover up not only this lab, it's been blown up, but also the two submarine disasters as being Wick's fault. So they'd be like, okay, Wick's fault, and then the other thing no one knows about. Now, Wick's going to go up and be like, not my fault, Robin's fault. Now, okay, <laughs> sucks for Robin's. Like, Robin's fucked us up, and Siren 1, you all fucked it up. And you had a secret lab up there. So didn't really work out super well for Robin's plan. No, but who's going to believe Wick? Like, yeah. <laughs> no one. We're sure a crazy there's a person. lot of uh, crazy monsters down there. We'll believe you with your cool hair. <laughs> right. That's it. So anyways, that's, it. that's the end. That's it. Yeah. Basically, they, they fuck on that little submersible for the rest of the movie. Um, what? Because no one can see them. It's kind of like James Bond, right? Didn't that happen in James Bond where he was like on like a little pod yep. and just like had sex for a while? Well, you know. The, so he's just like James Bond. Yeah. They, uh, I, be- they, I believe he was attempting reentry. Ah, oh. uh, that's right. Oh, so much better. <laughs> So good. That's the Moonraker euphemism. Because they never really show it. You can't show it in a James Bond movie. You got to be a little more classy and sophisticated. Yet. yet. I mean, in the future, we don't know. That's true. Well, because these podcasts will be forever. Uh, So people could be listening to these 300 years from now. And they won't know what the hell. Podcasts are forever. Get it? That's That's another James Bond reference. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> Get that soundboard, Zach. <laughs> the James Bond one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. All right. Should we get some ratings? We should. We should get some ratings. Uh, who wants to go first? Well, I think uh, Jamie should go first because I bet he's going to come in higher than all of us. <laughs> I'm feeling Guys. like we just experienced a big rift, but I'm ready. Okay, let's do it. Uh, so, yes, I think I'm going to come in a little bit higher because I was really enjoying myself while watching this movie, <laughs> even though it is uh, not good, like objectively bad, but uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun characters, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of fun monsters, a lot of fun heads exploding, a lot of fun uh, times where a guy named Wick uh, is shirtless for no reason. This is exactly the type of movie that I think I hope to see when I start a movie that I think is going to be bad. It's got weird lines, crazy shit going on. It's virtually incomprehensible. The acting is awful. Um, It's just a lot of fun. I just had fun watching it. And unlike some of these other really bad ones we've had, uh, it kind of held my attention the whole way through. And I kind of couldn't believe what I was seeing on the screen. So it kind of reminded me a little bit of like Dark Descent, where I'm watching Dark Descent being like, this is fucking strange, and I kind of love it. Um, so I'm going to come in. See, I was going to come in at six because like kind of halfway. I'm going to come in the true halfway at a five. Five out of ten. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Jamie. Well, Jamie, I couldn't agree more. That's kind of where I was coming at it from as well. It definitely captured my attention and uh, 
kept me hooked to it. I mean, I was blasting everybody in our, our chat feed that Zach hates uh, with with quotes and, and stuff right out of the gate. Like I knew it was going to be one of those just so bad it's good. The The dialogue was really stiff and the writing was really, really awful. And uh, I think the, the, the biggest offender was probably that paper mache looking corpse when they went down in the rift and Swen was in the seaweed and he startled himself. Uh, but other than that, actually, like the miniature work I thought was serviceable uh, for the most part. And I thought the scientist corpse in the in the like the science lab uh, when it was just like he was leaning up against the wall and it was just like festering. And uh, I thought that looked really good. And like all just like throughout, like the respirating wounds, like I was kind of like breathing and everything. Some of the some of the uh, practical effects actually did look pretty good. And the final boss creature, you know, it's all the different monsters and stuff. It was a fun watch, lots of action, funny one liners and just laughably bad uh, to the point that I enjoyed it. And I'm going to give it a six. All right. Zach, do you want to go or you want me to go next? Yeah, never mind. I'll go. I have my little hand up in this wonderful Zencaster <laughs> program. So, well, I guess one, I don't mind the text chat. It's okay. It's just, it gets a lot sometimes and I'm not always <laughs> going to go back and read it all. So with that, I'll give the, I'll give the text chat a 4.0. Now huh. onto the movie. Like you guys said, this was entertaining. It was fun. You know, is production value wise. I mean, yeah, okay. It's it's no, you know, it's no Saving Private Ryan, but I don't think anybody expected that. And I thought it was it was funny. You know, the one liners, Swin. Um, what was the one guy's name? Skeet. You know, Skeets. He was Wicked. great. There was the one guy that looked like Sean Connery. He was great. Yeah, that's the guy that I was talking about. That uh, the corpse. I thought his corpse looked really good. <laughs> yeah, it could have been a bastard kid. Who knows? But <laughs> you know. And at the end of the day, I enjoyed it. It was what, like 80 minutes, 90 minutes, something like that. Crazy. And I liked it. I liked it. You guys want to guess what I'm going to give it? I'm going to say uh, 6.9. Not not quite a limpet, but an eight. (laughs) Jamie? Um, Five and a half. Man. 6.5. 6.5. Oh. Whoa. See, I'm like, now I'm on the bottom. Now I'm feeling bad. I feel like I should be up at a six. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on, Jamie. Uh, you guys have said a lot of what I felt about this movie because <laughs> we have watched some movies that are just plain boring, and I just want them to end. And this one, like you said, Zach, I think when I, when I popped it in, it's on Amazon Prime, whatever, when I started it, hour 20 minutes, you know, short, sweet, not a lot of time to be just screwing around, wasting time. It was moving pretty quick. And I did think the effects were decent for what we were watching, especially the miniature work, like you'd mentioned, Brom, which is something that we didn't really talk about in the review, but or the recap. The acting, not great. I, as we'd mentioned, not good. would have liked to see more Arlie Ermey just cutting loose, going off. It was very subdued, very subdued performance by him. And we've seen that, I guess, with some of these other actors in these movies. Like you think of Steel Sharks, you see a really calm, zen Gary Busey. Uh, we didn't get quite that subdued with Arlie Ermey, but we did get some. And, Jamie, a lot of times I know you say, could we make this movie? There's no way. There's no way we could make this movie. It actually looks better. I agree with that. Yeah. It'd look even, yeah, we, we, ours would look way worse, actually. I don't know. It just, it just looks pretty good. And I'm going to have to come in and match you guys at a 6.25. Well, I hope, uh, hope Jamie's trivia is next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. So. Uh, after producing Leviathan in 1989, so just the year before this, for about $30 million, Dino De Laurinaitis, famous producer, um, he decided to uncredited, as an uncredited producer, finance this low budget version uh, movie. So this was kind of the same movie done at a lower budget. He didn't actually get a producing credit. His daughter, I believe, did. So in the Wait, beginning, you said you his name is Daniel De Laurinaitis? Dino, Dino De Laurinaitis. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. 
And so uh, his daughter did <laughs> act as a producer. So anyways, he hired David Coleman to rewrite a 250-page draft that was written by Colin Wilson. So apparently this had a 250-page script at one point. Uh, and it was written into English, but then translated into Italian for De Laurinaitis and uh, Spanish for the director, Juan Piquet Simone, who did not speak English. So. Wait, the director did not speak English, but he's got like Arlie Ermey and all these other yep. American actors? That'd be yeah, he had a translator on set, difficult. apparently. Yeah. All right, so the story, the original story was set in outer space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which may explain the guns, I think, probably. Uh, the tagline for this was, you can't hold your breath and scream at the same time. That's the right. same one we've had before. It really flows off the tongue. I'm going to say it's great. It's, great tagline. It's like steel sharks, right? At yeah. Like a hundred feet under, no one can hear you scream or whatever. Yeah. At about the 38 minute mark, the submarine is making its way through a tight passage and the character Skeet says, this feels like a golf ball being sucked through a garden hose, which is an actual line from Full Metal Jacket said by R. Lee Ermey. Now, did he ad lib all that type of stuff? Didn't they just let I him think go he did, off? yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. In full metal jacket? Yeah. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, he absolutely did. And that which was really it's funny you even brought that up because I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about the director of that movie, who apparently that director of Full Metal Jacket's like a real tight ass. Uh, not a Stanley tight Kubrick, ass, yeah. Stanley yeah, Kubrick. Yeah, like he yeah. he like makes people do like hundreds of takes, then he's very restrictive. But for Ermy he straight up was so impressed with him. They just let him do like whatever the hell he wanted. Like originally they got him to teach the actor. They hired how to do that role. But when he did it better than the actor, they fired the actor and just gave him the role. No way. <laughs> That's what they said on the podcast. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. I didn't realize this was full metal Jack jacket uh, trivia. Night. <laughs> no, it's season five. Uh, so Jack Scalia was Im immediately cast in the lead after he met and spoke to Dino De Laurinaitis in his office, which that's all the trivia says. So not sure what that means, but <laughs> De Laurinaitis took one look at him and said, you're hired. Apparently, uh, it had an alternate title of endless descent. So it's kind of like the second in the descent series. We had dark descent and now endless descent. That's pretty good. And then. This film is often mentioned in the context of a large number of similarly themed films released at the same time. So what other actors from those films would have done well here? And this was one of my favorite to put together because they're, I started, I realized that these movies didn't have anyone we would recognize. So I have to describe them for you to help you out, I think. Thank you. So some of them you may recognize. So Daniel Stern, did anyone recognize that name? No. No. So he's in Leviathan. He's one of the thieves in Home Alone. He's the thinner thief in Home Alone. Wait. Wait a minute. The thief? He's Marv? Yeah, Daniel Stern. You're Marv. There we go. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. So, Daniel Stern. Where would he do well here? Any role. I feel like he's a good comic relief, right? Because he's kind of funny. So, he's like Skeet. He's like the new Skeet. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Chris Tucker for Skeets. Oh, dude. That was exactly who I was thinking. He'd be so good <laughs> for this. Yeah. Oh, but who would I want Marv as? Maybe Robbins. Maybe Wick. Just yeah, maybe Wick. Sure. <laughs> uh, what about Miguel uh, Ferrer? For Ferrer? Anyways, he's in Deep Star 6. So he was the smarmy bad guy in RoboCop. So think smarmy bad guy. Well, he's got to be our, our bad so guy. Robbins? Robbins, <laughs> right? Be Sorry, I'm describing I'm making it very easy for you. Okay. What about Wayne Crawford? He's in The Evil Below. He played a character named Jake Speed once. So that's the entire description I'll give. He played a character named Jake S Speed. Well, sounds like he should be Wick Speed. Probably, mm -hmm. right? All right. What about Priscilla Barnes, Lords of the Deep? That's the movie she was in. She replaced Suzanne Summers on Three's Company. Oh, I watched Three's Company growing up. So there we go. Replacing Suzanne Summers. I mean, does she sound familiar, Zach? I can't even place her face. <laughs> no, I, I just, I know, I know, I know the show. Um, so just, yeah, I tossed love her in interest. Somewhere. Got it right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What about Ed Harris? Now he was in the Abyss, Man. Uh, but he was also in the Abyss too, even deeper, uh, where he finds that the Earth is dying because the aliens from the Abyss are really sad because they don't have anyone to love. Right. So he sets up a dating service for the aliens. Right. 
But in a twist, it actually turns out they're only attracted to him as a sexual partner. So then he has to spend the rest of the movie oh having sex with all the aliens on the bottom of the ocean for humanity. <laughs> So Dude, that was the most elaborate shit. <laughs> I oh, loved it. The tagline could be like, "There's only one deep. There's Arizona. only going deep for going deep for humanity. There's only one <laughs> fucking way to save the planet." Nice. I like that a lot because it's a double entendre. So there's two ways you can yeah. read it. Oh, so Ed Harris, he's our wick, covered in grease. His ex-wife is looking into the room, sees him falling asleep at the computer, covered in grease. And is like, I want that. No. Mm -hmm. But he can't even type on a computer because he's dripping so much grease on it. He's short circuit. It's like short circuits. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And let's do a little Phantom Zone. Engage the Phantom. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So this one is very easy. The bad guy. Robbins, Ray Wise. Uh, he's a prominent character actor, but he was also the Secretary of State in X Men First Class, which involves a submarine because Magneto lifts a submarine out of the water. And then it also has uh, Jason Beggy from Phantom in that movie. So just one step from this movie. Nice. Well, what, two steps, I guess. This movie, X Men First Class, Phantom. And then my algorithm also informed me that the director, Juan Piquer Simone, did direct another submarine film. It was called Manoa, the City of Gold, which apparently just reused all the submarine footage from this in that movie. And that was movie was released in 1999. So like they use the same submarine footage from this in a movie released concurrently with The Matrix. Was that his last movie ever? I think that was. Yeah. I believe yeah, he cause... passed away after that. Or yeah. Yeah. That's what I saw, too. OK. Yeah. That's nuts to use, I mean, 10-year-old footage. <laughs> when I wouldn't even be surprised if it turned out that this was this footage was from a different movie as well, that they just kept on re- re- reusing the footage. But well, You got to do what you got to do, right? I think he literally was. He was hustling. <laughs> Good enough. All right. That's it. It's all, all mine. Well, I like I like to talk about Ed Harris. I finished watching the first season of Westworld, and I loved him in it, so... I couldn't get through the second season, though. Oh, I haven't started it yet. Yeah, he's definitely a great character on there, though. I really like I really like uh, the first season a lot. Well, now I'm now I'm skeptical about the second one. <laughs> Sorry, so I didn't mean to, that sucks, Ben. Didn't but... mean to taint taint your view of it. Just watch more Chernobyl. I'll just watch it again. Yeah, Chernobyl, fantastic. So holy good. crap! I give it a ten. So good. Oh, easy, dude. Easy, perfect. Score. Are these all HBO shows? Yeah, yeah. I've been living under a rock. Kyle I'm Chernobyl's really... phenomenal. It's wait, so good. HBO is not TV. Oh, you're right. But it's I'm... HBO. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. It's the home box wait. office. Say that again, Jamie. But HBO is not TV. <laughs> oh. Uh, I thought the X Files theme song was coming in. <laughs> Wait, wait. Say it again, Jamie. Uh, I forgot what I said. <laughs> <laughs> but did you? <laughs> My favorite's right. a techno right. one you got somewhere hidden away. <laughs> Say it again, Kyle. <laughs> My favorite one's that techno one you got hidden away somewhere. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) On that note, it's time. It's it's sub 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 world world wide wide wide. So in the rift, we have an experimental submarine, the Siren One and Two, and Wick designed both of these submarines with what we hope is the best intentions, but nobody really knows. And the U.S. Navy wanted to make them. Super badass, so they decided to put nuclear reactors in them. So I thought, what other U.S. experimental submarines had nuclear reactors in them? And I was able to find one, the American submarine NR-1. It was put into service in 1969. All right. Yeah. And unfortunately left service in 2008. 
but it's a deep submergence vehicle that was used for research, oceanographic, geological, you know, mapping, all that type of stuff. Could also install and maintain underwater equipment and was also used for top secret retrieval of items off the ocean floor. Most of the stuff is classified. There have been a few things that have been declassified. Uh, one of the things it was looking for were parts after the Challenger explosion. And this is actually the smallest nuclear submarine that was ever put into operation. It's 147 feet, 8 inches long, has a beam of 12.5 feet, has one nuclear reactor and one turbo alternator. You think it'd go a little faster, but it only can travel on the surface at 4.5 knots, submerged 3.5. There's an endurance of 200, and this is optimal, 210 man days. So, you know, one man, one day. So if you had two people, 105 days, so on and so forth. So, although it said the absolute max could do was 330. It went down to a test depth of 3,000 feet. With it being so small, it had a small crew, three officers, eight crewmen, and two scientists. So some of the special features on this, it had three portholes that you could see out of, had exterior lights, TV, uh, and like a TV antenna and cameras. It had a claw. It also had a like interchangeable arm that could be fitted with different tools. It had a work basket that the claw could drop things into. Something that kind of would suck if you're on this boat for like a month is it had no kitchen and no bathing facility. Ooh. So I saw that uh, from what I was reading, they said that like you'd have to every week or something, they'd have to take baths and buckets or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And um, down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, due to its small size, actually, Captain Allison J. Holyfield said that everyone got sick because <laughs> you could just feel the ocean pushing and pulling the boat the whole time. And it said it was literally just only a matter of whether or if you were throwing up at that time or not, like it was bound to happen. You, how long were they on there? A month? Yeah, you could be on there for like a month with could, a full crew. Can you imagine that? Man. I mean, it's tight quarters, you know, 100, 100, less than 150 feet with uh, 13. No. Yeah. 13 people. I. Woo. Yeah little tight uh it was also super slow uh with those speeds so when it was going somewhere it'd have to be towed by a mothership and then it could go off and do its own thing and something that was i also found kind of funny was that for the longest time the u.s navy denied the existence of it and if there was a photo where it was in it they would essentially photoshop it out <laughs> Just thought what, it was kind of goofy. What were the years of this, Kyle? It was uh, from 1969 to 2008. Gee. <laughs> yep. And now we can see it because I'm seeing online that it's actually, it's a museum ship now. Well, it was scrapped and they've got like pieces of it. So, is that right? They just like took pieces of it? From what I, from what I was reading, yeah, you can, uh, no. I know. It's a That's little less crazy. exciting. Unless the the one piece is where everyone bathes. Now, that would be interesting. Ooh, yeah. Just a bucket? It's just like a bucket. A, like a Home Depot <laughs> bucket. Jeez. <laughs> and here it is. So that's all I got, man. Good job, Kyle. I agree. Great job. Great Do job. Good job. All right, Brown, all right. you got anything for us? I do, but first, before we get into it, I uh, have recently found out that if I mention my friend's dog, Kevin, like we have in the past, my friends tune into the podcast. So that's a free extra few views or listens rather. So we mentioned Kevin. I can say, hey, we talked about Kevin in the podcast. Boom, free views. So shout out to work, guys. Let's make this work. What kind of dog is this, Kevin? It is a Chihuahua uh, Jack Ooh. Russell. So Ooh. literally the worst possible dog ever. I was going to say, that's, <laughs> I was gonna say that's, that's not a good dog. So... Yep, but uh, free free listens, guys. So I got Even your if you back. Hate on, if you hate on Kevin, yeah, they'll they'll tune in. They have to tune in now to see what we said about Kevin. 
Oh, good. He's, good. A, he's actually going to, pre- it's like 30 seconds of uh, talk about Kevin. So they should, that should be, that's fair. We have to talk about Kevin. That's a movie. Let's talk, talk about, about Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> no, we have to talk about Kevin. It's the title of a movie, actually. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the name of the episode now. <laughs> good, good. Is that the prequel to Home Alone, Jamie? That's the one about a kid who shoots people with a bow and arrow, I believe. So the prequel, we got you. All right. Yes. Okay. Yep. Tube three, ready to fire, sir. (laughs) (laughs) Give it to me. Pretty sure Zach has laughed at each of the uh, little jingles so far. It's because it's the first time he's ever heard them. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. I want to make that my my ringtone. Have you not listened to any of the podcasts? I have, but for some reason that just is, I don't know. <laughs> just I caught listen you to it at the, right. at the gym yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. When it's going at four times speed, it's hard to hear them. I like to listen to them when I'm alone at, in my bed at night. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so tonight uh, we are reviewing The Rift, which I, I think we all agree was pretty great. Pretty great Rift, uh, but not the best Rift. So tonight, top 10 guitar riffs of all time. And yes, I know it's spelled. R-I-F-F. So let me go into riff mode. Got to adjust my mic. <laughs> great, great. Here we go. Good, you guys like my, uh, my horrible play on words? Yeah. it's. I, it's love, I love this, yeah. All right, so here we go. You guys uh, hopefully should recognize uh, most or all of these. Number 10. Very I nice. Cut it there, so we don't have to pay any royalties. Good, dude. That was, that was of course, ACDC "Back in Black." Oh, we're not guessing. Okay, uh, I'll let you guess the rest of them. That one was a little uh, pretty obvious, I guess we could say. Uh, this one, this one, uh, we'll we'll leave you to guess here. You, you, should, uh, you should. Somebody should know this one. I don't yeah, know. Do you, knows. do you think that all guitars just sound like chickens or something? <laughs> I was going to say something about that, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows it? I don't. Anybody? Kyle. Do you? I don't either. I, like I've heard that, but I can't place it. I'm gonna just throw it out there. My guess is Metallica. That's a good guess. It's Pantera, Cemetery Gates. Had to throw that in there for my coworker who would uh, probably just uh, throw me out on the street if you didn't uh, if I didn't include some Dimebag Daryl in there. So that's a good one, though. Uh, number eight, uh, getting off the metal trend here a little bit. A uh, little southern rock action. Anybody know that one? I have no idea. No idea. Didn't seem Come like on. a very impressive uh, riff, actually. It's a, it's a simple one, but it's a good one. It doesn't have to be complicated to be... Uh, to be a, a good catchy riff. This is a very famous song. So Almond Brothers Midnight Rider. Mm. Oh, I'm a midnight rider. That one? You, 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 no. Uh you'd recognize the rest of the song though if you were to hear it. Yeah, Zach, it's more like I'm the Midnight Rider. <laughs> Come on exactly. up to get you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, now we're talking. <laughs> All right, number seven. Somebody's got to know that one. Fucking Green Day. (laughs) Nailed it. Motherfucking Green Day. Come on, guys. 
Dude, we're, what kind of bombing. music do you guys know? listen to? <laughs> Prog rock. Not even gonna say it. I like classic rock. <laughs> what? But I don't know it. I don't. So, uh, you you guessed it before, Zach. Just guess it again. Oh, Metallica. Yeah, seek and destroy. Okay. God, I'm getting kind of disappointed over here. <laughs> <laughs> this is number six. Oh yeah! Come on now! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Dude, NASCAR <laughs> Thunder, NASCAR <laughs> Thunder, two thousand and eight. I think that was on the soundtrack. I swear to God! Oh my that, word! You remember that, that one NASCAR game? <laughs> Dude, I remember a lot of NASCAR music. <laughs> Those glitches that we were playing. Oh, the you'd, one in BG. Yeah, you'd yeah. start off your car would be like thirty feet in the air, and then when it hit green, just, like it would just crash. Just <laughs> immediate yellow flag. Everybody wrecks. <laughs> so good. Remember Jason bought it, did like a three and a half hour race at Bristol, and then the game froze yeah. and he lost all of his data. He was doing the full on <laughs> races. Oh my word. And that's like what? Was it like 500 laps or something? Like crazy? Yeah, at Bristol. Yeah. 500 laps. He got to like 470 and the game froze on him. <laughs> Anybody know the actual name of the artist and song? No. ZZ I know the song band, but I don't know that. Yes, Kyle. Thank you. LaGrange. Number five. You guys will get this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ozzy. Of course, Ozzy. The name of the song. Crazy, Crazy train. train. Number four. Getting into the really good stuff now. This was actually a really hard list to make. There's just so many good uh, guitar riffs out there. Classic songs. Had to cut it down. Oh. Zach somehow managed to sound like a, a chicken still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got a mine problem. by Guns N' Roses. Number three. Oh. <laughs> Zach's impressions are just spot on. <laughs> Number three sounds like you knew it, Zach. Layla. Bye. Line. <laughs> Eric Clapton. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Number two. <laughs> Down. Who knows that one? No idea. Uh, it's it. Rush. Yes. A YYZ. YYZ. Yep. So Jamie hasn't known like a single musician. No, or song. this isn't. This isn't totally my like. Most of these I recognize from like playing hockey in high school. Like, but put on the sake of music, and it just be a bunch of music like this. I'm like, okay, sounds fine. <laughs> sure. Getting psyched up for this hockey game, but otherwise, like. I, I, you know, obviously, I know who these people are. A lot of the bands, but I'm waiting for some Stones, Ben. Uh, I think Stones that was, it, was wasn't that number one. What's that? Stones was wasn't not that on the, the end. List. That's what? fucked. <laughs> there, there's uh, actually no Led Zeppelin either, but there was some. There was definitely some uh, some contenders there. Again, I, I had to cut it down from like thirty. I was thinking about putting <laughs> Cashmere on here, but. <laughs> Um, Rock the cashmere. That? We should do a whole episode where you just get to do all of them. I mean, I can. I can. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, another another Patreon. <laughs> another Patreon. Ben's jukebox. <laughs> it's a hundred hundred best riffs of all time. Yeah. All right, you guys ready for number one? I am. Yeah. 
Okay, first of all, Led Zeppelin, I'd have to go with Whole Lot of Love would be my, my first Led Zeppelin. So we'll say that's an honorable mention. Oh, I also forgot to mention that I'm not including Smoke on the Water or Iron Man. I think they're too good and too obvious. So <laughs> maybe, maybe they're too good for the top 10 list. Too good for the top 10 list. And I, I think they're just too, too famous. So number one, it's actually widely regarded as one of the best guitar riffs of all time. It's number one on my list. Number one song for me. Weird Al Yankovic. <laughs> that is anybody? Weird Al Yankovic. Dire Straits. Yes, Dire Straits. Money for nothing. Love that song. That is my top 10 riffs of all time. Hopefully, you guys uh, have heard of the heard the uh, the Weird Al Yankovic version of that one, right? No, what's the what's the parody? It's the parody is Beverly Hillbillies. Beverly Hillbillies. It's all it played the entire music video during his movie UHF. So I did know the that UHF's a hell of a movie, right? So I did know that one, just not the correct song, the alternate song. Very nice. Well, great. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> hopefully our listeners uh, enjoyed a break from the submarine talk to listen to some really good music. <laughs> I'm sure they're very happy. <laughs> and I hope everyone goes and checks out Chernobyl because that show is the shit. Yeah. Stop listening to us right now and just go watch Chernobyl. <laughs> You'll actually learn something. <laughs> it Especially ends, it ends strong, out. too. The fifth episode was yesterday. Or, oh. I, I won't date it. Sorry. Uh, but man, it ends, it ends really strong, which was awesome because uh, game of Thrones left a very sour taste in my mouth. <laughs> that, ben, I literally said the same exact words to somebody today. I was doing a PD, uh, for the district and I was just like, ah, game of Thrones still has a sour taste in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, this, like, this was my novel. faith in American cinema for sure. Yeah. Anybody All else? Right. Anything? All right. Smash cut. Oh, no don't way. we have... Whoa, 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 whoa. Do we oh, have one shit. more thing? Of course. My favorite part of the episode. <laughs> do, 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 Zach Facts, it's Zach Facts. When you're going down, <laughs> get some Zach Facts. When you're going down. Zach, once again, what? laughing at his own. <laughs> None of this sounds familiar to me, man. <laughs> and I've listened to episodes. The Simpsons one's like my favorite. This is crazy. The Simpsons one doesn't have these thing, a lot of these on there. Oh, well. Because it's a submersible pod. There Let's get go. started. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are doing Zach Facts. Um, we've got four facts for you today. Are you Are you guys ready for the facts? I'm so fucking ready. I mean, it is. It's ten o'clock Eastern time right now. So let's get going with fact number one. In 1996, Scholastic Entertainment bought the rights to the Rift <laughs> to turn this. <laughs> Cut that. In 1990s. <laughs> Ah, oh, damn it. One It'll second. be one of those. <laughs> no, it's... That'd be good. <laughs> Stop I'll, laughing. I'll, I'll mute myself. I'll mute myself. Thank you. Just <clears throat> making me laugh. <clears throat> <laughs> Zach Facts. Zach Facts. We got four facts for you. Number one. In 1996, Scholastic Entertainment... <laughs> damn it. Bought the rights to the Rift to turn this into a magic school bus episode with Ermy to reprise his voice. However, this episode was never released. Oh, <laughs> <sighs> but, it, but it was made. You're saying it was made? Yes, it was made. Oh, it's okay. it's in the um it's in the underground. It's the after dark. Yeah, magic school bus after dark. Yep, Magic School Bus After Dark. <laughs> and the logo Flat is tire. the is the Magic School Bus turning off a lamp, right? And I'm not, that would just be silly. Okay. It's a bus. <laughs> There's a lot of buildup for that one. 
Fact number two, I know. I the Fact Rockies number would be two. A hell of a lot rockier than this. <laughs> John Denver's fool. Of, all right. Fact number two. Um, Jamie, is it Juan Piquer Simone? Sure. Okay, the director <laughs> was interviewed prior to this film being released. He said this would finally be his big break with an Oscar. <laughs> sure. He would die, I think, 12 years later. All right. Fact number three. The original script consisted of only three characters, Wick, Hmm. Phillips, and Nina. And the entire movie was supposed to be in a deep submarine focusing on menage a trois. Nice. Look at that. (laughs) All lines up. Did they they have a, a name for it? Menage and a sub. <laughs> oh, clever. Wow. Sub de trois. I don't know. Oh, sub de trois. I like that sub one de better. trois sounds pretty good. <laughs> okay. It's like a there. combination of three languages. Sub de trois. <laughs> All right. And the last fact isn't really a fact at all. Actually, no, it's a fact. <laughs> um, it's an advertisement. Still want more of the rift? Well, wait no further. Join the original cast as they all reprise their roles in a hilarious sequel titled The Rift 2. Opens again as it opens to theaters this fall. Still want more? You'll never guess who makes a special appearance this time around. Who? who, who? You talked over it. I was asking who. <laughs> all right, play it in three. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Oh, so it is making that. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi, everybody. No way, Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Great. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Get the techno one. Get the techno one. Techno one. <laughs> okay that's enough out of me jesus somebody else take over i think that's it i think we got oh it. god thanks for listening to submersion follow us on facebook instagram and twitter don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every thursday If you like what you heard, please leave us a rating on iTunes.